So we talked about Jamal Hill's chances on beating Alex Pereira yesterday. Today, we're going to be talking about the champion's chances of defeating that sniper, Jamal Hill. From the previous thumbnail and breakdown in general, you pretty much know what I'm about to say here on how Alex Pereira can KO Jamal Hill. He's just going to shama him. How can you not shama Jamal Hill when he's throwing punches like that? And from that wide open chin, I mean, it's happening throughout all of Jamal Hill's fights. And it's the way that he even throws punches that makes him even wider open to get caught by Alex Pereira. He got caught a lot by Glover at 42 years old, who doesn't hit nearly the same as Alex Pereira does. Even left hooks were catching Jamal Hill on the chin idly just just from the open without any real big setup hill's chin is just there to be hit sometimes and the shorter less athletic slower older glover Teixeira was able to catch him on the chin with a left hook what would the longer faster younger more experienced more technical and more intelligent striker alex pura would be able to do in the same exact position and look at the punches that jamal hill throws winging haymakers that makes even mike perry look like floyd mayweather out there i mean good golly He's throwing everything he's got into these punches without even being sure that he would land because he didn't have a correct setup to throw punches that confidently. Superman punch, belly out and chin out for the lead uppercut dropping his hands after i mean what in tarnation bro now this is the last thing i talked about in that video jamal hill keeps his chin very high and has a low guard idly it's just how he naturally stands he's moving around the cage like this and he gets away from being hit because he is able to move away at a longer range from the opponent's attacks this was shown in the glover Teixeira fight against tiago santos and a big thing we talked about in that video was about stance switching which is a very big key thing for Jamal Hill's chances of winning. But it's also going to be a big thing for Alex Pereira on knowing what kind of attacks to fire out there. If Jamal Hill is switching into orthodox at any point of the fight, Pereira needs to capitalize because it's not going to be that often. He needs to take every opportunity he can get, but at the same time being intelligent about his strikes. So he has to capitalize with the outside leg kick that he's known for, but not to make a pattern out of it. So Hill can't read it later. If Pereira throws the outside leg kick immediately every time Hill switches stances, Hill will know when to time him and land one of those big shots over the kicks or even defend the leg kick and he'll can start playing with Pereira's mind by switching into orthodox and knowing that Pereira's gonna throw that kick but he's doing it intentionally to bring that kick out there so he can counter it without Pereira even knowing so Pereira cannot create a pattern out of this he needs to be a lot more unpredictable on how he throws that leg kick if Jamal Hill is fighting this fight mostly in southpaw if he's not fighting in southpaw his chance of losing the fight increase because he's opening up Alex Pereira's signature techniques the outside leg kick the left hook the close stance jab but when Hill does take southpaw and he's constantly moving around the lee leg kicks for Alex Pereira are going to be very important right because Hill's going to be constantly chasing that outside foot angle to line up his left straight this lee leg kick from Pereira will cut him off from chasing that angle right he'll chop on that leg Hill can't move that direction for that moment and it's going to allow Pereira to also react in a way that he wants whatever angle he wants to take either getting away from the fence if he's too close to there throw out some big punch to line up Jamal Hill for a follow-up shot whatever it is lee leg kicks are going to be super important it's also going to cause damage of course slowing down jamal hill's movement over time and if there's enough damage on that lee leg it's going to cause jamal hill to switch into orthodox where now that leg is going to get chopped down so there is an opportunity for alex Pereira to chop both legs of jamal hill take him out of commission and also from the lee leg kicks it can keep jamal hill right in front of him to push kick him away so this is something i talked about for jamal hill that he could use the push kicks as he's chasing the outside foot angle but it can work for Pereira Pereira, although it's going to be trickier because it needs Hill to stop moving first or specifically stop moving to the outside foot angle because Hill will be harder to push kick as he's constantly moving away from Pereira's power leg and into the lead leg which could also cause more damage if Pereira intercepts him with that lead leg now Jamal Hill loves to throw that left kick when he takes the southpaw stance he did it against everybody he's fought it's a consistent technique that he throws and we've seen Pereira deal with it very well against the southpaw power kicks of Israel Adesanya and we're going to be completely honest here Adesanya does almost everything better than Jamal Hill. They're both snipers in a sense. They both like to fight from longer ranges. And Izzy is technically better than Jamal Hill in pretty much everything. And he could also throw really good kicks of his own. They're extremely sneaky, little telegraph. And as we know from Jamal Hill, he's not great at picking up his hands. A sneaky high kick can definitely get right through and chin him. Another big thing for Alex Pereira are feints. Feints will get Hill off balance quite easily. And you'll see his feet go all over the place, just not under him correctly. 
correctly. Hill's footwork is basic at best and will overstep and overextend for his punches, losing his footing when he sees an unexpected reaction from his opponent. This could be feints from Pereira, anything that Hill doesn't expect. Hill's composure for his footwork is just not there. And anytime he gets off balance, it's an opportunity for Alex Pereira to catch him with some big shot, specifically that left hook. I am not exaggerating. When you watch his feet, like zoom in on his feet when he's fighting, it looks like he's doing the hokey pokey. He looks like he's break dancing out there. I mean, look at this entire sequence when he fought Tiago Santos. Look at his feet. So he starts parallel side to side, standing straight up. Santos moves forward, which gets Hill on guard, drops his weight a little bit, steps even more squared, completely side to side, tall in front of Santos. Steps back with his right foot and leans on it. This is a recipe for disaster, then brings his left leg back and it's in a straight line behind his right foot. Get up right now and try to stand the way Jamal Hill is. Put your right foot forward and then your left foot about two feet behind it on an imaginary straight line. What would happen if someone rushed you like this? You get completely off balance and it only gets worse. Hill brings his right foot back to try to get away from Santos. Even Santos's footwork is not all there. It just tells you the state of the light heavyweight division for the past few years. What is this with Jamal's feet? He brought them both together. Then he steps left with his left foot, parallel yet again, standing as tall as he possibly can. Now he finally steps forward in more of a balanced stance, but he's still leaning back dropping his weight backwards even though he stepped forward which is quite awkward he stepped forward leaned back and then back steps again bringing his feet closer together before he goes on that same imaginary line like before this time his left foot is slightly more off the line but he still has very little balance do you know how many opportunities here alex Pereira could have potentially kicked out his leg he could have front kicked him to push him off balance and then pressure him against the fence he could have fainted forward get Hill off balance, and then attack him with a left hook. And this is just one sequence of many where you see this from Jamal Hill. I am not kidding. Maybe I changed your perspective of Jamal Hill after telling you to just focus on his feet. No diddy. Just focus on his feet and watch as he's break dancing. Now he's still a very dangerous puncher and he can make anything happen at this division. One punch is all it takes. But there's a lot for Alex Pereira to objectively work with here. And we know that Hill will always pump his lead right hand and hand trap when he's in southpaw against an orthodox fighter. Pereira focusing on that pumping hand can get Pereira caught by Hill's power left hand quite easily. Being distracted by that lead hand is exactly what Hill wants from Pereira. And Pereira also needs to be focused on the range that Jamal Hill fights at and where he usually throws his punches. Most of Hill's punches are long range. His long wide hook, his straights, his overhands. Hill seems to be a lot more comfortable at throwing punches from long range, putting Pereira at most danger from a mid to long punching range. But Hill will be vulnerable in close range and just outside his punching range where he will overextend. So the clinch is a great place for Pereira to land elbows and knees and a short left hook on the entry or the exit. Remember that the entry or exit on the clinch is going to be super important for Alex Pereira. Extremely dire for him. And Pereira can also wait to counter, right? This could be one of his best ways to catch Hill off guard, especially after the leg damage, which will cause Hill to overextend even more. The pressure of the jab from Pereira will also be key to push Hill backwards and return pressure. Also with the pressure, Pereira throws a lot of good body jabs to back the opponent up. And this can be really good whenever Jamal Hill is throwing those big looping, long range overextended punches. The only thing he will have to watch out for is Hill timing him for a left high kick. And he will know that is coming whenever Jamal Hill is trying to take the outside foot. He lines up his kicks when he does that. But if he's standing kind of just in front of him, Pereira should be able to just throw an occasional body jab to back Hill up. Hill's shot selection becomes a lot more obvious when he's backed up, throwing a lead hook or a straight. Those are the two punches that he's most confident in, and whenever he panics, you're going to see those more often. Per can also open up his shots by using his wrestling, similar to how Jamal Hill can use it. Fake takedowns, open up the uppercuts or the signature left hook. This can even work against the southpaw stance on Jamal Hill. And finally, very important, if Pereira does pressure Hill to the fence, he needs to keep his composure of not getting caught like he did against Izzy. Hill has a good chin, and he punches very hard. We have seen Pereira fix a bit of his composure when he's barraging the the opponent up against the fence. You saw this against Jan Blahovic, but he needs to keep that in check even here against Jamal Hill and pretty much everybody else he fights. Because even though he is powerful and very scary, he can get caught and knocked out. So that's ultimately the end of the breakdown, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give this a like, make sure to subscribe, hit the button for notifications. If you guys have not checked out my Jamal Hill breakdown, it should be on screen right here. Check it out and I'll see you guys in the next video.